They provide the pass protection on the blind side for the quarterback. They pave the way for the little guys to do their things in the open field. Yes, they don't get much notoriety unless maybe they're holding on third and long, but we've got to give some love to the big guys, the offensive linemen, the guys that make it happen, especially in a very offensive league like the Big 12. And we're talking about the top five, according to our distinguished panel. We've got Hunter Cook from Viva the Matadors. We also have Melissa Trebwasser from Frogs Award to run down the best up front, the big guys along the offensive front in the Big 12 heading into 2015. And Hunter, we will uh, hear from you first. Well, it wouldn't be a top list about the Big 12 without Baylor or TCU taking the number one spot. So let's just go ahead and get into that. Uh, number one, Sister Drango from Baylor. Easy. Not much of any real questions or debate regarding that. He is the best offensive lineman in the Big 12. And I really think this, this season is going to show it's supposed to be a really high draft pick. Came back for his senior, his senior season. Wow, words are hard. Came back for his senior season. He's going to be really, really good. Um, another guy I really like is Ty Darlington out of Oklahoma. Center, leader of that offensive line. He plays very, very well and helped pave the way for a pretty solid Oklahoma rushing attack. I mean, Samaj P. Ryan is a man in an 18-year-old's body, but he does not do all that himself. He, you could drive my truck through some of the holes those guys are putting out. Um, number three, LaRaven Clark from Texas Tech. Probably a homer pick, sure, but he's also incredibly good. Also turned down the NFL draft, turned down some big dollars uh, to come back and protect whoever the heck's going to start a quarterback for us. Um, fourth is Halapulavati Vitae. I believe I said that right from TCU. He, huh? So that's better than I'm going to be able to say it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he. I believe he's the uh, blindside protector for Boykin. Didn't give up very many sacks. Just a great uh, great kid overall. I actually had the opportunity to play against him in high school when he was, um, oh gosh, what team was that? Haltom. Yeah, he's a Haltom kid. Um, yeah, he, yeah, he's good. I, I know from personal experience. Um, Cody Whitehair from K-State at number five because it wouldn't be a good offensive lineman list without someone from K-State. Uh, the Purple Wizard. He just does good things down there with the fundamentals and the basics. It's a good list, uh, Hunter. And definitely, if you're talking about Samaj P. Ryan and running through a hole that the truck could go through, and then when you finally hit anything, it's a Kansas Jayhawk. Yeah, it, it's a win-win situation, I think. Uh, talking about his record-setting performance, of course, when he ran for 4,000 yards or whatever in one game. I think it was 427, actually. Some, some and I think another thing that's important here, get your, your take on it, Hunter, before we pitch it to Melissa here, new quarterbacks all over the place. So we know there in Lubbock, you've got a returning starter of sorts in Pat Mahomes, so he's fairly well-established. Show us what what he had at the end of last season. Of course, Trevon Boykin is the gold standard right now, but other than that... Tyrone Swoops didn't prove anything last year, and pretty much across the board, outside of, again, another quarterback in Mason Rudolph who played like three games, uh, not many returning uh, signal callers across the conference offensive line, and especially that left, left tackle position is going to be extremely important. Yep, it definitely will be. And a lot of new signal callers, we might see the first year that the Big 12 isn't the, like the most highest scoring league ever. You know, it... It probably could happen. We don't know. Um, we could have someone come on like Boykins did and have maybe a little bit of a lackluster-ish first year and then really step on in his next year, his sophomore campaign, which hopefully happens for us and not hopefully happens for everybody else. Okay, Melissa, we're going to talk about a bunch of guys that we're not going to talk about in the fall, unfortunately, uh, to their dismay. But now we leave the stage to you to talk about uh, your top five. Well, I'd start with Spencer Drango as well. Uh, normally I'm a big fan of guys coming back for their senior season, but he was a guy who was really like, go get your money, son. Go get your money. I uh, would have loved to have seen him out the door. Um, and, you know, you talked about new QBs. You know, everyone's expecting Seth Russell to step right in like the last 40 or 50 Baylor QBs have. But one of the things that's going to help him is having a great offensive line. 
Uh, number two, again, this may be a homer pick myself. I'm going to go with Joey Hunt. I think he's a guy that is going to surprise people and win the Remington this year. I think he's that good. Um, and that comes not just because of his physical abilities, but he may be the smartest offensive lineman in the conference and one of the smartest in the country. Uh, he's an engineering major. So <laughs> this isn't just a smart football guy. This is a smart, smart overall kid. So he's a little bit undersized, but he's just really good at what he does. And I think he deserves a lot of credit for Boykin's maturation as well. Number three, I don't think you're a homer at all. I'm going with LaRaven Clark as well. Uh, big, strong, two-time All-Big 12, freshman All-American. Uh, that's a good experience line at Tech, and if Mahomes is going to have a chance or whoever ends up being it, it's going to be because of the, the running game and the offensive line that, that the Raiders put out there. Um, I also went with Big D, but I'm smarter. I call him Big D, so I'll have to mess with that name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he's he's just one of the most underappreciated guys, but I, I can't I feel sorry for you playing against him because I can imagine he was about that size in high school too. So good oh, kid, great player, great leader, um, and just a really good uh, good guy to have anchoring your blind side for sure. Um, and then number five. I'm going to go with another Baylor guy. Um, you know, TCU and Baylor both bring back almost their entire offensive lines, and I think that's a big reason why they're considered the top two teams in the conference. Um, Kyle Fuller is Baylor center, just an absolute athletic freak. Uh, this guy can do everything. He's huge. He's strong. Um, he's a good runner. You know, he's he's – he basically does everything you need from the center of your line and makes the play calls. And as uh, Seth Russell being really a first-time starter, uh, if you take out his non-conference uh, snaps, relying on a good center is going to go a long way for him. Good stuff, Melissa. Hunter, did you have to actually have a one-on-one -on -one matchup in, in high school? Sometimes. In past <laughs> those situations, yeah. <laughs> So, so you've got that notch in your belt. Regardless of what the outcome was, you know, a, a big-time uh, all-conference type performer, and, and you had that matchup. So that's, that's good stuff. Hey, Melissa, when we look at the TCU offense, quarterback, check, two best wide receivers possibly in the conference, definitely two of the top four or five, check. Uh, the running back, we talked about Aaron Green last time, and then you listed off like five or six very talented guys that will back him up and kind of sort out the rest of the backfield. Check. Offensive line seems to be in order. Uh, any, any possible issues with this offense? Any concerns? Uh, i got to find some wood <laughs> on here. Uh, there, there's one concern that I don't want to mention, but there's one guy that if we lost would be a big, big hindrance to us. Um, like, you know, we talked about QBs. We don't have an established backup right now. We have a guy who might be a good backup in Bram Kohlhausen, but we're all hoping we don't have to find that out quite yet. Uh, so, you know, if Boykin stays healthy, we've got pieces in every other position that can come and fill in, um, but you don't want to lose your quarterback in an offensive league. But it, that's that's the one thing that could really shut things down would be if, if uh, Boykin were to have – we were very – we'll call it this. We were very, very healthy in 2014. Very healthy on both sides of the ball, and that was a huge reason for our success. If that re reigns true, this could be a really, really special year for TCU. Hunter, uh, Mahomes was lights out at the end of 2014. You've got DeAndre Washington coming back as a thousand yard back. Uh, wide receivers, you're always uh, well stacked there. The offense, um, a any concerns for you coming into 2015? Quarterback. Absolutely, without a doubt, 100%. Um, Davis Webb is pretty good, or can be pretty good, but he seems to be a little bit streaky and uh, to me. And the more I think about Pat Mahomes, the more I just realize we do not have a big sample size on him. I mean, he played against Texas for maybe a quarter. He tore up Iowa State, which, no offense to them, that's not exactly a huge feat. Um, he tore up Baylor, and no offense to them too, but their defensive backfield is really just not that good. They're decidedly average. He's been playing very, very well, but he hasn't been playing against incredible blow-you-out-of-the-water competition. So I, my biggest fear and nightmare is that we go with this two-quarterback system, just playing whoever's hot at the moment, and it, I, I, don't, I really don't know how it's going to work out. I really feel like we need to find one guy and stick with him, but I don't know who that guy is, so quarterback. Definitely. Do you have a big uh, non-conference game like you have the last couple of years against Arkansas? Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's something, that's for sure. 
<laughs> I don't know how to think about that yet because last year was just honestly not very fun, and we might get a lot more not very fun games. So, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just throwing that out as the measuring stick. You, oh, you're yeah. kind of concerned about the quarterback situation, want to see if Mahomes can do it against a good team. you got a good team in the non-conference slate. That's very true, very true. All right, we got Melissa Trebowasser from uh, Frogs O War on SB Nation and also from SB Nation, Viva the Matadors, Hunter Cook. Guys, appreciate it. Uh, definitely a good rundown on the offensive line and always appreciate the insight. Yep, thank you. Take it easy.